Welcome to another news of the bazaar. News that makes you feel funky. Dr. Terry Donovich is a scientist at Carnegie Mellon University, is doing her best to make books important around the world at the same time that she's trying to solve one of the biggest problems in human history, clean drinking water. After successful field tests in Bangladesh and two African nations, the future looks bright for the product, the drinkable book, which means everyone benefits. From the outside, Dinkovich products looks like a simple book. But inside the cover, the pages can work magic. Currently, Dankovich and her team creates each page by hand and apply an appropriate amount of copper or silver nanoparticles to the paper when she uses them to clean water. They simply tear a page out of the book, place it in a holder, pour water through the page, which acts as a filter. The nanoparticles are absorbed by the bacteria in the water, which kills them. What's left is clean drinking water, which has no strong smell or unpleasant taste. Seriously, the pages of this book can eliminate... Cholera, E. coli, and typhoid. In each page of the book can filter over 26 gallons of water before it needs to be replaced. Entire book can supply enough filters to purify four years worth of drinking water for a single person. And now, if you're a bit skeptical about all this, I hear you there are limitations. The major drawback being the tests have not shown whether or not those books' filters eliminate viruses and protozoa, two other nasty inhabitants of drinking water. But on the bacteria front, the trials in Bangladesh were a resounding success. Pure sewage flowed into the stream where the water was drawn. Even with its such foul H2O, the book filter was able to remove 99% of the bacteria, making it clean or cleaner than most drinking water in the United States, Britain, or Australia. The next phase of development involves commercial manufacturing of the books on a larger scale, and both China and India have expressed an interest in funding the production. Such funding will help to make the already cost-effective product even less expensive. Currently, a single page in the Draco book, book costs only three cents to make. That is not a typo. Three cents. Who said that print was dead and books were worthless? How would you like to go to the moon? Oh boy, would I? Okay, little boy, are you ready to go to the moon? I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> now remember, you must release the safety locks before launch or you will die. Do you understand? I don't know what that is. Do you understand? <laughs> With all due respect, sir, you have to stop sending children into space. I wish I could. A creepy car show offered a new treat for car aficionados in the Detroit area. A Scream Cruise took place in the Pontiac on Sunday, a day after 21st annual Woodward Dream Cruise celebration of classic car culture. Glenn Konospetsky, executive director of the Pontiac Downtown Business Association, tells the Detroit News that the car show and motorcycle block party were designed to bring the attention of the Pontiac's growing business district, as well as custom motorcycles and car clubs. Konospetsky says the Thunder in Pontiac Dream Cruise Festival sought to attract the groups that can't or don't participate in the traditional Dream Cruise. Hearst enthusiast Jake Ose tells MLive.com that the vehicles are a piece of machinery that were made to work and not just a macabre, things to look at. Police say dogs trying to get at a box of cupcakes left on top of a stove apparently started a small fire in central Pennsylvania home. The landlord tells police in Logan Township that he stopped by his tent's home to let out the dogs about 8 p.m. Sunday. That's when the landlord saw a small stovetop fire and called firefighters. Police say it appears the dogs were trying to get into the cupcakes and not only knocked off the stove's control knobs, they also turned on the stove, causing the fire. The fire has been ruled accidental. Nobody was hurt. Logan Township is near Altoona, about 85 miles east of Pittsburgh. <laughs> Baylor officials insist it is a fluke that number 61 and 58 are side by side in the Bears' new football team photo. TCU fans likely won't believe that since the Frogs lost 61 to 58 at Baylor's last season. In the front row of the Baylor photo taken this week are two senior offensive linemen, number 61 Gerald Broxton and number 58 Spencer Drango. They are that order with coach Art Brillas close behind them. We're cool incidents. Baylor spokesman Heath Nielsen said Friday, hard to believe, I know. Nielsen said players were sorted by class. Seniors were on the front rows with brows, then sorted by the heights by the out-of-town photographers during the shoot Thursday. 
Big 12 co-champs Baylor and TCU were both left out of the college football playoff last season. The loss in Waco was only for the Horned Frogs, while Baylor suffered its only regular season game the following week at West Virginia. This season, Baylor plays at TCU on November 27th, the day after Thanksgiving. And I believe in a football team with no classes. And stay weird right here on the Toro Taco Neuro channel for more weird news of the bazaar.